Welcome, I'm Bill Wake. We're here making a calculator that can work in inches, and we're up to the point of dealing with, dealing with parentheses. We got the basic form working the other day, but we want to cover the cases where you have unbalanced parentheses. So we'll start looking at that today. All right, let me turn this on. Okay, so, oh, let's see, I guess expression. Right, so we deal with left parent. You push it on the stack with a very low precedence, and then um, the evaluate is really kind of nothing. Um, it's it's a unary kind of thing, and it only cares about itself. Um, and I'm not sure, not even sure it means anything. Um, the right parent, we check and make sure that. Um, if we have something pending, well, that means there's text in progress. We need to save it and 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 push it. Um, and then we evaluate everything with precedence one or greater. Um, notice this had zero, so it doesn't evaluate. It evaluates down to the next left parenthesis. And then um, we've forced it now to just pop that. So it pops the matching parenthesis. And... Um, that that leaves the value on the stack, uh, the operand stack. Uh, let's go to evaluate at least. Okay, so its final step is to is to put things push the result on the stack. All right, but what this doesn't care about. Notice that we just we just force a pop, but we don't check that parenthesis is really there. Okay, so we evaluate all the one or graders. There should, theoretically, if we see a right parenthesis, there should be a left parenthesis with precedence zero sitting on the stack. But if it's not there, we're just popping it, which is not, not good. All right, so let's, um, let's find the right place to test this. Hmm. I can probably use a little less room. Okay. Um, well, we have calculator tests. Uh, basically, our choice is we could start an expression test. We could do it in calculator test. And we could do it in um, the content view test. All right. In some ways, the content view tests, because it's such a straightforward mapping, these are basically key presses. It's... Um, I don't know. It's it's uh, pretty easy to to do. Okay, so let's make an example. Um, let's start with um, missing left parenthesis, I guess. So if I do three plus four right parenthesis, right parenthesis. Um, now I've I've consumed it and. I expect a warning that I'm missing a left parenthesis. Now, what will really happen? I don't really know. <laughs> I, you might get a message later, but I think probably popping off probably puts an error value somewhere, and we just get that. Okay, uh, so we expect um, error missing left parenthesis. All right. And, um, well, let's just run this and we'll get, <sighs> we can also imagine missing a right parenthesis. And I can also think about what if I did one plus two, um, and had something there. Oh, I didn't run this beforehand. Sorry. Is that, no. Three. Okay. I guess I could um, at least sketch those. One plus three plus four parens. Okay. Um, I think our second parend, second right parend, is going to consume the plus off the stack. And we should, ideally, we should get the error missing left parenthesis. I don't know that we will. 
Okay, we're still starting up. Okay, making progress. And then let's add the case for um, a right parenthesis, but no left parenthesis. Okay. Now I think the the way they work, left parenthesis always pushes, right parenthesis always pops. Um, I think we don't have to worry about deeply nested stuff. I think that just kind of falls out. But um, these three cases seem independent enough to me. All right, come on. <laughs> Okay, well, while that's while that's doing its thing, whoops. Uh, let's update this. Uh, rewrite, evaluate. He's one item. Look ahead. Yeah, that might be. That might be good. Um, another thing I'm thinking of is, I've got um I had a good discussion with my wife the other day about some of the things they need in kilt making and, um. The folk formula stuff is fine, but there's some places where you need um, you're doing particular shapes of pleats and stuff like that, and and it would be nice to have something that's aware of what's going on. Um, so I think one thing I'm going to do is rename the project to uh, Kilt Kilt Calc, and f in the future focus it on some things there. Okay. Um, and those things are, let's call it a pleat calculator. I, I, I we'll work on the name. Okay, but this ran. One test, zero failures. Have we already put that in? No, it did not. The way it ran. <laughs> let's try that again. This text somewhere. <laughs> if we don't, I really have trouble believing the test passed, you know? Oops. Uh huh. Why does it think it's running or passing? Hmm. Nothing else has that text in it. So where, where is that expectation being met? I, I don't get it. Um, okay, let's, let's change this one and make sure this test is running. I what? <laughs> um Oh, I didn't do equals. Well that that might affect this one. I don't see how it affects the other one. Um Hmm. Let's run it again. It's too bad I can't run individual test cases with this. Hmm. Okay, that's more like it. 
What happened? <laughs> Which case are we on? I don't think we can tell. Too many right prints. Oh, we did start down this path. Okay, well, can't remove the last element from an empty collection. That's that's what we want to have. Um, why these content view tests were passing? I I don't know. I don't think Xcode's really running it. Oh, okay, we're gonna come back to that one. All right, um, calculator tests. Too many left friends. Well, let's change our message. We want error missing right parenthesis. And then error missing left parenthesis. All right. Let's make sure that one's. Well, that's going to. Oh, come on. Xcode, you are not doing right by me. <laughs> um, hmm. Okay, that test is too many right parens. All right, so let's ignore this one momentarily. And this test should fail now because I changed the message on it. Oh, this is so weird. Okay, let's do some breaking. Well, that test went okay. All right. Print calc dot display. All right, let's step over. Continue. Ah. So weird. How did I get to this breakpoint and then it jumps up here? Yeah, maybe a little too much, isn't it? Storage value missing right paren. All right, let's look at the calc display. Um. Assert equal cock display error this. Okay. What? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Um, let's do this one too. Thank you. Okay. Hmm. So we have a message. I guess we put this in at the end of the other day the other day. I'm going to take the content view out. Um, well, let's just make sure this fails, but.
Right. Okay. Um, God, I'll just comment this one out. Should still fail because this line should fail. Thank you. Okay. Two is not equal to three. All right. We're cooking with gas again. All right. We'll take these out. I guess I'll worry about that case in my other tests. Okay. But this one should be easily fixed because <laughs> all I did was change a message. Um, and that message must be at the end. Yeah. Okay. Now this test should pass again. This test is still going to fail. Oh, not not yet. <laughs> oh. Error missing. Oh. Should be right. Okay. And that should now pass. Okay, this one should crash right where that pop is. Okay. Um, enter, evaluate. Okay, here we are. All right, so, um, hmm. The way to do this. All right, I think we just have to check. Um, if operators dot is empty. Okay. Um, all right. If it's empty, I think we want to push. Um, well, I think we want to push, um, an error. And then otherwise that. Now what we're we're relying on a bit. Well, I guess operators is empty. There may or may not be an operand on the stack. If there ever comes any combinations with error, it's going to um, it's going to be operating with an error with, you know, an error with some other value, and that should always come up with an error. All right, so let's, let's see if that's working. Good. All right, now the other test I had was... Well, um, is it too many? Hmm. 
Hmm. I guess it's not. Well, we we had something like um, um, calc dot enter dot digit three. Dot. Do we have Leprin binary? binary. Oh, this is where I don't want to do this here. Okay, maybe we will take a content test for that. Content view test. I think it's it's just so hard to so hard to set up those individual operators and all that stuff when I don't even really care what they do. So the example was one plus three plus four equals, and we expect error missing left parenthesis. Okay, because that is two, that is one. All right. Now let's... I think this should fail properly. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Um, right. So, hmm. Uh, I'm not as sure. See, this... Well, what is going on there? So, um, so we push one, we push the operator, we push the parent, we push a plus, close off, which you consumes the plus and consumes the left parent, and now we have one plus right parent, and it evaluates the one plus I mean it it's complaining which is good I guess the question is is this is that really what's going on it's not really error it's not really an operator missing between values Maybe it's just a malformed expression or something like that, because it really is just kind of a weird, you're kind of in the middle of a, um, you're basically being asked to, to de evaluate one plus right per end, which doesn't make sense. And it's really, you're missing like an operand in this case. So the message is um, a little off. I think I'm going to change it to now. Is that going to be the right thing? Hmm. Y yeah, it can. And it's, I guess what's weird to me is okay. So when we do the when we encounter the the first leprechaun, we close that thing, we evaluate it, we get a seven, and we push that on the stack, and then we we have one and seven on the stack and plus on the operators, we come into the parend. I don't understand why we're not, oh, operators is not empty. Okay, because it's all top level. Okay, okay. Um, but now, hmm. See, I'm wondering if, like, I don't think the way we type things I don't know. It's maybe trickier to solve than I want. But 
as you're put, like if you just typed one one plus, all right, let's see what that does. Um, that is probably going to get that message, I think. One plus equals. Expression can't end with an operator. That is coming earlier, I think. I think that's coming out of the, the calculator itself. Um, let's find. Cannot end with an operator. What did it get? Okay, expression. Yeah, so we enforce that um, when the equals is there, but but it doesn't. So I I kind of think maybe this is. Um, sorry, this one. I don't think I don't think that can happen there. Because, like, we don't have a way to enter values, like, to get two. It's not like typing and you could put 17 space 22 and then, oh, you forgot to put an operator. I think I think this really is. Um, um, the only way you can get operands.count not one. I, I think the only way you get stuff more than one is if you've you've left an error. You've got an error in your in your it, it parenthesis at this point, because error operator missing between values that can't happen in a normal expression. I mean, the way we enter them, they can't happen. We always um, you can't end with an operator, and you can't put one. Um, you can't start with one, and you've got to put operands and put operators between them. So I, I think, I think I can simplify this. I think these are the same case. Um, now we may we may find somebody disagrees. I mean, some other um, some other test may have hit that particular error message. We'll have to see if it really is a missing right parenthesis. Okay, who's the test? Oh. Ah, keep doing that, don't I? Oh, wait, missing right parenthesis. Hmm. This shouldn't be this hard. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? All right. Um, is that coming out of here? If operands count is not one, then it was really a missing left parenthesis. Okay, I think that's probably the right. Yeah, if you still have operators, you must have missed a right. If you still have too many operands, you must have missed a left. And, and nobody else complained about the error changing on it. So I think we've covered it. Um, and the content view test covers that. Okay. Um, all right. I, I'm questioning the use of this. <laughs> Like, oh, would these be better off up at the content view level? Usually I'm very picky to get the test at the right level for things. But in this one, the the content view tests are so, so much easier to write. And they're not doing anything different than these. That it, it really does make me wonder if, if these tests are paying their way. Now they do a little bit of... They do a little bit of stuff, I guess. We've got a different function in here and stuff like that. But, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right. At any rate, I think I think we've covered the cases that... Oh, wait, you mentioned one. 
uh, wrong order. I think that one fell out, but let's let's be explicit. Um, uh, one plus two, eh, something like that. Um, so they, they are balanced in the sense that they match, but they're the wrong ones first. Okay. And I think we expect an error missing left parenthesis in the first situation, although either either one would be acceptable to me. I think that'll be detected first. Okay. And we only report the first error, so I don't I don't object to that. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> what do you get? Missing right parenthesis. Yeah. Let, let's do both sides of this. One plus two equals. Okay. I don't know. It's a little weak. I mean, I could make a more generic and just call everything unbalanced parentheses or something like that. Um, hmm. I think I'll do that. Okay, all those should fail. Missed one. Well, it's good that that caught it. Tells me I've got them covered. I think this operands push, you know, I think I should be able to clear the operands at this point. So I'm saying there are no more operators. You've evaluated everything. There are no more operators. So there, there should only be one value on the stack at this point. And I can do this and ensure that's the case it i don't think it hurts well because error should propagate all over the place anyway it shouldn't hurt anything and the only case it could cover is if we had 
um, if we had some operands sitting there still, it just, they're sort of asking for trouble. But it should be neutral to us from te yeah from testing point of view. Everything should still pass. Okay. Um, uh, let's make sure. So we did error checking uh, for parentheses. Okay, and that gives us this. Error checking. One item look ahead. Okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, this is a refactoring, but it's it's moderately. Hmm. It's moderately tricky. I think. I don't know if. Um, I want to make an incremental change to it. All right, so I got input for each. All right, so the the real deal is what what I want to do is I want to have access to the current value and then the next value um, from the input and. Let's see, how's that going to do it? Okay, I think, all right, I think I'm going to change these guys. I'm, I'm going to add, let's, let's see if this one's used. Eh, I don't think that's... Let's find keypad. What's he doing? Oh, he still does have TBDs there. Okay, I'm going to add to it. Um, entry. Um, I'm going to add an ending. All right. And here. So expression. Let's... Let's add that to input. I don't know, is input editable? I'm not sure. Input dot add dot ending. Okay. So this gives me something. I'm yeah, calculation will be one behind. It's it's almost it really is look ahead, is how I think of it. That um like when I do digit right now, I append it, but I don't know whether or not I can turn it into an operand. Um, and so that's why we have to always do this stuff to check if pending is not empty, put, you know, eval basically evaluate pending and push it on the stack. I would really rather have the digits and units do that. Okay. So, um, so what they're going to get is the current and the next. And then, um, well, no, that's not the, I'm kind of switching the way this is going to work. I don't want to do a for each anymore. Yeah, because, because it can't see what's coming next. So it doesn't know whether it's another digit and it should just depend it, or it's a, a plus sign and it should evaluate it, the, the operand. Um, all right. So, I think adding the ending, we're going to have to handle it. Okay. Um, and that's actually pretty easy. It's just, it's just get out. Ending is, um, I guess break will work. Okay. That should be no change. Whoops. 
Nobody should mind that. Oh, well, yeah, we got a few that aren't. Okay. And I don't know if we need to see this ever. Uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, TVD, we don't really want to show. But um, it's kind of a tradition in the compiler world that dollar sign represents the end of input because many languages don't use it for anything. Some do, but um, but I think that'll be fine. We're not calculating with money, so uh, we'll, we'll let it go. So think about regular expressions, right? They use dollar sign for end of line. I think that's coming from that same... Um, philosophy or source all right but all i've done right now is i've added an a trailing ending you can tell me one at a time okay enter well this this really can't happen um Yeah. Okay, so theoretically there's no keystroke that's going to give you a dot ending. So that shouldn't happen. Got any more case statements for me? All right. Um, so we've added something to the end that gets ignored. That's pretty neutral. All right. Now... Um, I'm going to switch this. We know there is an input dot first. Okay. Can't of course unwrap non optional. Okay. So All right, what's the current type? Um, that's not what I'm expecting. Element question mark. So why can't I unwrap? Okay, well, well, we'll see. All right, so I want to say, well, maybe this is entry for now. Well, entry not equal ending. Do that. Input buffer. Oh, he has no first. And this trusts you to know that it is not empty. Okay. Uh, expression. Binary entry cannot be applied to entries. Entry is not equatable. Oh, they're not going to let me do this. I cannot check that type. Um, all right, let's 
Well, let's find this. No, this is too far. Okay. Let's undo this. Okay, I think that's where we were. Right, entry. See, entry can't be equatable because operator takes functions. Um, so we're not allowed to look at them like that, but we can exit the loop when, when we hit the ending, nothing to do before the second input. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the problem. Okay. So now the thing is I'm switching the way I access my input buffer and that's, that's kind of implicitly happening. I'm never very good with these sequences and iterators and all that. Right, we get an iterator. If you sequence, he's got an iterator. Okay, so let's go see what iterator does. Okay, while well, let this equals numbers dot next. Okay, so it gives us a nullable thing. Okay, let's try that. So input for each should oh man. Yeah. Okay. My pad just ran <laughs> of juice. Okay. <laughs> Um, so we should be able to say let iterator equals input dot make iterator. Okay. And then while, um, well, they did it with a next, right? Well, let item equal iterator dot next, not a, Oh, while that checks for nil. Okay, fine. Um, while that entry equal iterator dot next do something. Okay, and that should be that. Okay, so so I think input dot for each, this should be the equivalent, but it's going to give us some flexibility that we need. Um, well, is it? It doesn't really give me what I want. Okay, what, what I want is I want to be able to look at the current item and the next item. This isn't going to let me do that because it only, it only has access to the current item. So I, I think I just need to give my, my input buffer the interface I want for this. Okay. Um, all right. So let's... Um, Got rid of that one. All right. Don't know if we have a sub subscript. I 
Okay, so public subscript. Um, index of int. And then this thing is just an array, so we'll just return element sub index. Oops, yeah. Do we call it an element? Entry. Okay, so th that gives us the current, um, well, the entry at a particular index. All right. And then in here, let's do uh, var index equals zero. Well. Um, input dot count. Let entry equal input sub index. Okay, I think I'm a little better. Input buffer has no member count, really. Well, that's Okay. Well, I think this is a step. something up <laughs> I have <laughs> jeez okay yeah it's traditional to increment these indexes <laughs> um, at the end okay I think that calculation of the index and all that is gonna is gonna abstract away in a minute so I'm not as worried about it, but it is a little awkward. There's a reason we put in these kind of easier loops with, you know, just iterate over the elements and stuff like that. Okay. Is that everybody? 48 tests. Okay. Test completed. All right. Um, let's say switch expression to index based access of input. Okay, well, we're getting there. <laughs> All right, so now Okay, so What I really want to do is say current. Again, I still want current and next. So I'm going to. Like 
got entry. This input some index. I want I want to make a little routine for this bit. Um. Expression doesn't do anything but evaluate. Okay, so that's that's okay. Um, it's also read only. Well, hmm. All right. So what I want to have, I mean, usually it's called next token or you know, next item. Okay, so if I say there's hmm. Okay. I'm gonna say look ahead. And it's private. Look ahead. I almost can do this. No. Okay, I'm gonna pass the arguments for now. And I'm gonna return an entry. And I'm gonna do that by returning input sub index plus one. Okay, and now input is known, so that's fine. Okay. Gosh, it's been a long time since I've done this, <laughs> paying for it. All right, so, and usually you start this way so you don't have to worry about switching to it. I think I want to make another one that's private function current. And... Well, okay. It returns an entry and it's, it's going to return inputs of index. All right, maybe we can get this abstracted out a little bit. Right, so I need to move index up. Okay. Well, let's do this. No, I guess it was better as zero. All right, and I can do it here if I need to. Okay. I think to that. All right. So entry input some index, I should just say current. Okay. And then this, I'm going to make a method out of that too. Next entry. Now here we have next entry. Okay. Um, everybody. 
Okay, we start at the current. Eventually, we got to make sure every path through here reads the next one. Except our ending one. I don't know. Do we have a two-level break or something? Um, or a labeled break? Yeah. Oh, I do. We just throw a label on and break to it. Okay. Um, I don't know that we need it. Okay. <laughs> Make sure I haven't messed things up. So what we did this time is we pulled out uh, kind of index management methods. Yeah, so the, the restrict it's kind of like saying um, when you get to the last index, when you get to ending, you shouldn't be looking ahead anymore. You're allowed to look at ending, but you're not allowed to look further. So it's, I don't know, it's a little, I don't want to say it's asymmetrical, but it's, um, th this is the reason you have the ending. And in some cases you need two endings, you know, two ending tokens to do it. But most of the time when I've done it, you, you only need one. I guess if you had two character look ahead, two item look ahead, you'd, you'd need two. Um, all right, so... We extracted methods to handle index management. Okay. And your responsibility is you, you must move to the next token when you need to. All right. Now this. Okay. So what I, I'm going to, what I'm going to try and do now is, um, Oh man. The the switch uh, these enums are nice with the added stuff, but then you you want to ask questions about them and it's like, "Oh." So I'm going to have to make a little a little helper for that. But what I want to do is say something like this. Um while current equal um well, current is an entry. Yeah, so I want to say, well, entry dot is operand, which we don't have, um, meaning is digit or is unit, then do these things. Okay, so something is off. Yeah, I think we need to seed this first is the way it goes. So this is var entry equals current. And then we're in. Okay. So entry needs to update. And we may be able to fold this together at some point. All right, so I'm switching things. So um, let's let's try and get this right first. So entry always starts out current with the current value, and is always ready to ready to show you the 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 next item. Okay. So entry. All right, let's make sure that's a good step. Apparently not. <laughs> okay. Um, and I suspect, I suspect it's that 
thing you just raised about the look ahead. Um, all right. So let's do this outer. And then in this case, you want to break out of outer. So we don't want to access the next token after we've seen the ending. All right. Okay, so um, start entry at first token, exit loop when hitting ending. Okay. Now, see what I want to do is I want to, I want to this is well let's see what's going to be funny is i'm going to i'm going to do more than one step at a time and i've got to make sure things are are good all right so let's um Let's go to entry. All right, so we we allow these questions. Let's let's add one for um, basically we're curious if it's a unit or a digit. Okay, so and that's that's is operand. Okay, it's going to look kind of like this. Okay, if case digit is self, if, else if unit is self, otherwise it's not. Okay, so now... Well, one thing I know is I can say if entry dot is operand do this all right and it's going to pass because we know it's true all right um it's it's a redundant check in effect but we're going to switch okay so now if the entry is an operand a append it okay but we're going to do entry um we're going to do next entry okay so we we found that and then we're going to do um next token so uh current again entry equals current okay and this can be a while. Okay, so this is the big switch. Um, while the entry is an operand, so that it starts out that way, true. Append its stuff, go to the next entry, um, get the entry value itself, and then now we're looking at the second character or the second entry. And if it's still a digit, then we want to keep appending. And at the end here, um, we know we've, we will have grabbed all the digits or units in a row, and we can do this. Okay. Because, um, well, is that going to script the unary? Yeah, this thing should let's let's put this in the same bracket. Okay, so if pending if the pending is not empty, push the value. All right. So 
hopefully I've done this step right because it's kind of the critical switch. And I have not, whoops. Okay. Okay, uh, let me... I'm gonna revert. Entry, I'm gonna keep this. So, expression I'm reverting. Okay, entry, let's check this. I think I just added his operand. Yeah. Okay, run those tests again. They should still be good. Okay, now I'm going to try this one again. Here. Now, the only place this might be a problem is if we had no pending... Wow. Evaluate un unary. All right. Um, so I understand the logic of it that we were saying, hey, a unary operator has to have a pending value in front of it, but it doesn't. Okay. Because, I mean, they could hit the plus or minus key first, and then that should be an error. So plus or minus equals should be an error. Um, but... Well, let's see where no value found comes from. Okay, if numbers is empty. Okay. All right, so I think that's, well, I think that's more of an evaluation error. Hmm. I mean, really, it's if operand is empty, right, then, then this expression is, is illegal or improper. Okay, so let's make this pass with this guard clause because it, it was relying on the value.parse to do that. But I think, I think what it should, should say is if operands is empty, um, if operands is empty, then um, we really, that's where that error, error should come in. I mean, well, I guess we'll take this. Okay. 
Okay, so if if there is no value, we will complain. Now, I don't know if this is ideal. It's certainly true that if you try and evaluate a unary postfix operator and there's no operand to operate on, you, you really should call it an error. And rather than we're not blowing out, but on the other hand, I could also see that in, in calculator, it, it checks this. I mean, it, it really kind of, it's also true that if it starts with an operator, it's an error. Um, So I'm less, I want to be sure we're covering all these cases. So I'm, I'm, I'm pushing things around, but anyway, I think we're pushing this in. A unary operator must produce a value. If it doesn't have one to work with, it's going to push an error on the stack. And um, I think that's okay. I think what may be true is that we should probably maybe maybe find a more systematic way to make sure the expression is formed uh, without regard to parenthesis balancing, but, but otherwise it should look good. Um, we'll have to see about that. But I believe this will make the test pass. Okay, and so in effect, what I'm doing is pushing work onto the operator to make sure it's got a good context and um, uh, rather than on the parser. All right, so let's commit that. Um, make unary produce an error value if no operand was found. Okay. And now I think I'm ready to try this other thing again. <laughs> okay, everybody else check uh, that once an operand is got to make sure it's pushed there already. So they do. Okay. All right, let me try this loop again. Okay, while entry dot is operand. Um, we're going to do some pending. Okay, we want to append entry. We're going to, well, we're going to call next entry. And entry equals current. Okay, so what I believe this will do is it's going to accumulate all the digits and units together into an um, into the pending array for now. Okay, and when these guys get here, it, it should be there in the array and they'll push it. Okay, we're going to change that in a minute, but that's should be good. <laughs> all right, which one of you? Clear resets errors. Index out of range. Hmm. Yeah, we're double ticking on that. Okay. This is where
I'm going to push that to the tail end of each of these. This one does it now because of that. Um, none of these others return early, so I can just do this. Do this. Do that. Do that. I don't need it here. And I can do it here, but it doesn't really make sense. I don't know what other characters there could be. I guess we had our backspace and all those things. They don't do anything. Okay. Uh, digit while loop doesn't check the count. Yeah. Um, it doesn't care because it's only an operand. Um, is operand loop. Uh, this loop, um, it should be able to append them as long as they're digits or units, and and that should be fine. Um, they never look past current to do their job. I mean, the entry is there; it's current. If if this comes up with um, end of the ending character that we shoved in there, um, it certainly will not execute beyond that and when you go back to the case then it'll do the end next entry might be out of range um no okay so i'm 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 following the rule that says that i'm starting with an ending and i never move past it okay so um if if I call next entry when entry is ending, then I got a problem. But um, my code is not going to do that. Now, maybe, maybe next entry should check that. I mean, it wouldn't be impossible um, to check it in there. But to me, that's sort of like internal checking. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be necessary. I mean, really, as long as you follow the pattern that says, you know, um, if you know things, it, if you know it's safe to move forward, move forward, and then set up that next entry at that point. And um, uh, as long as the ending case doesn't doesn't try to do a next entry, but we're only putting next entry when we know it's not an ending. Okay. Um, I... I, I worry sometimes, you know, like sometimes I feel like, eh, I mean, in a way, I feel like what you're pushing for is, is to make sure that we know that it isn't that. And in some ways, I'm sort of saying the the pattern of usage guarantees it. And I call I call that argumentation. <laughs> it's not a strong position. It's like, if it's, if it's absolutely obvious that next entry doesn't go past current, um, then then it's completely obvious this will never be a problem. But if if I'm doing this kind of thing, I'm doing argumentation, then yeah, it's it's potentially a problem. All right, so let me make sure this is fixed, and then I'll try and move a little more away from the argumentation point of view. Um, okay. That's completed in one morning somewhere. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, let me just make sure that's all still good. But I think we just made the switch. So at this point, when when you have a digit or unit, we're going to read them all. Okay, because his operand is his digit or his unit, basically. Um, and so pending here is is always and only the list of digits and units. The only thing we put in pending is this stuff, and we've just accumulated all of the ones in a row. Okay, so um, all right. So next entry out of range. Let's let's make that. Um, let's make it guaranteed to to be safe. All right. Um, if uh, 
well, let's say if index is less than input dot count, do this. Okay. Um, right. So if index is less than that, increment it. If it's equal, greater or equal to input dot count, it just stops, but but it's going to exit the loop. Um, the loop is always checking less than, and if it becomes greater than or equal to, I guess it'll only become equal to because we move by one step. Um, but if it becomes greater or equal, it um, the loop exits. So I, I think that that changes my argument from I've got to make sure every tailing thing does the right thing to um, as long as your loop is not trying to look past the input, your while loop, then your next entry will not make that happen. Okay, run tests one more time. Then we'll take a break. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is kind of like a guard clause, I guess. Um, put a guard on... Um, next entry so it can't go past end of input buffer. Okay. Um, I, I, that'll give us a little extra safety and um, it won't guarantee everything's right because you do have to make sure to update them, but it will prevent going off past that ending ending value. All right, let's take a break. So three or four minutes and uh, we'll come back, and I think what we're going to do, we're going to get the payoff of getting this in one place instead of having to do it every time um, it shows up. So see you in three or four minutes. All right, welcome back. Okay, so I think we're going to we'll get that payoff now. So this code should should be true here. Okay, so we gathered everything for the current entry. And um, we we will push, we'll evaluate it and push it on the stack. Now we may have missed. I don't know. Unary does it. Binary does it. Left print does not because it doesn't care. Right print takes care of it. Okay. I, I think all the relevant places do that, and then they um, they they check that that whether they need to push or not. So if they didn't check, like Unary didn't at first, then I'd be trying to do it twice or something. You know, like they assumed it was not empty. Now we say it must be. All right, so this should pass. All right, good. Now, also, I know pending is not empty because I, I, I know that my first, um, I know that when you come in here, you've got an entry. So the entry has to be an operand because it's digital unit and we've appended it. So this can't happen. All right, so let's take that out. Okay, and you know, because Everywhere else, they had to worry about what if what if this thing's not already there and all that stuff. Well, now we're doing it in a place we know it is there. And again, test should just pass. All right. And then now I think we get this payoff. Okay. Um, I, this code should never be executed. Operands.push... That one's okay. This one. Okay. And pending is not empty. I believe we won't need that either, but I'm going to save that one.
Now, I'm noticing our tests seem on the slow side here, too. They paused on content view tests. We'll come back to that, too. All right. Um, so those tests ran, and nobody triggered this code. All right. So we know it's being done up there. And I'll delete that. All right. Okay, so we um, now we um, accumulate the whole value into pending and push the value on the stack so operators don't have to check. Okay, well, the other thing I'm realizing is <laughs> we don't really use look ahead. Okay, so I don't think that's needed. If, if we had more complicated situations, we might. Um, but really, like this is our only major place for that because of the the loop looking for digits and, and units. Um, all right. And so that also tells me pending, um, it, I believe pending can be local. All right. So um, let's find pending here, here, here. Okay. If not pending is empty, well, the only way pending is not empty is if you executed a digit or unit, and we don't do that. Okay, so I believe this is unnecessary. Now, there, there may be some error chest that could trigger this. I mean, if there's no operand, pending would not be empty. All right, so I think this is true. Okay. Um, yeah, so if there's no operand coming in, that's the only way pending could be not empty. And we are always, um, when it comes in, we're taking care of it. Okay, so pending is now local, so nobody cares if it's empty. Right? Okay, so uh, make pending be a local variable. Okay. Let's let's go check this one. All right, let's pop push. Unary op. All right, let's go find our unary op. Um, I guess it's in keypad, right? Bottom row. And negate. All right. Um. If it's an error, return it. If it's a number, negate it. Okay, that that tells me there's another little um, change we can make in unary. Um, I don't need an else clause here. I can just say evaluate it because unary always returns. Oops. Unary returns error if it started with error. Okay, so um, we're just 
pushing that error, it'll just propagate out and we're fine. So there's no, no need for the extra check. Okay. Now, the other thing I'm seeing when we, uh, let's see, access current. Well, what I'm seeing is we're always doing this. And I think that means we can fold that together. Let's see. So um, I guess we may have to look at initialization. But if next entry, let's make this return an entry. All right. And then um, return input sub index. All right, so it's an increment and return. Okay, so I think it, let's start this at minus one and do entry equals next entry. And I've got to do this in multiple places. I think that's it. Oh, one more. Okay. Oh, we're still testing. Okay. <laughs> Get rid of those shortly. Okay, apparently I don't know what I'm doing. All right, let's try that again. Well, maybe it's worth looking at it. This one again. Did I? Thank you. <laughs> okay, entry equals next entry. So we'll take out these commented lines. So we don't need current. All right. <sighs> so I, hmm. I think it's better in the sense that the actions are more localized, that we're doing whatever this operator or whatever it is needs. Um, now, I 
Yeah, I think that's become pretty straightforward. It, it pushes, it, you have this rule that you have to consume your own token, like your own thing. He, you got right print, do all your stuff, and you got to get rid of it and make the entry ready for the next one. Yeah, current, current is not used, you're right. Okay. I'm okay, I think. Th there's still a, a, a slight... Um, I guess I have this sense that we are trying to enforce... We're trying to enforce the syntax from this side as much as we can, and we're we're trying to error proof it some too. So this is if you did the three plus times, we change the plus to a times and move on with the expression. That seems okay. Um that's this stuff. Equals make sure the last thing is not a binary operator. Um, is that necessary? I mean, I think you would... You'd evaluate, you'd push, but then at the end you'd catch it. Wouldn't you? Operators count. Well, okay. Yeah, it'd be more like you'd you'd push the operator, but never have an operand to consume it, so it would just sit there. Um, okay, so I guess this does does give you a better message than it might otherwise. Okay, clear backspace equals. We don't care. Digit input is empty or. Okay. If the previous one is a unary operator, so if you did seven plus or minus seven, we drop that unary operator. Eh, okay. Um, actually, we we squeeze it in in front of it. Okay. Yeah. So I think what's missing, and I'm not sure it's fatal, but like I think I think of there being a little state machine that says, you know, the first character has to either be a left parenthesis or a digit or a unit. Like those are the three things you can type. And I guess it could also be clear or backspace or equals, but um, you know, for an expression purpose, those are the only valid things at this point. And if, if once you've seen one of those, you can see another one. All right. But at that point, then you have to, you need an operator and it could be a unary or a binary. But once and once you've seen that, you should go back to left parent or digits and, and um, units. Um, hmm. Now, or right parent after operand. Yeah. So we, it's a state machine that doesn't know balancing because that's too hard for a state machine. But... It should know, like parenthesis three parent right parent is um, is coming in a legal order, okay? It it if it was left parent, 
if it was three right per end with no left per end, that that calculator can't keep track of the nesting. So it wouldn't know the difference at that point. But um, so it looks syntactically legal. But when you did the popping and stuff, we'd recognize like, oh, unbalanced. Okay. Um, let me leave it as an idea for the future. Okay, we did this. That's that's a good thing. Actually, it doesn't even it's not even error uh, look ahead per se. Um, the real thing we did was we make um, pull sequence of number and unit into a value, so all the operands don't have to check for it. Okay, I think that's kind of what we did. Um, so I think what I'm proposing is um, may calculator have a state machine for um, valid expressions not including balancing parentheses. Okay. I think that's that's cool. All right. Now, um, I don't think I want to do this next. All right. Operators, I'm not too worried there. Well, but like state machines can't count, right? So they can't they can't keep track of how many open parentheses there are. Um, now you can, you can augment it and it's not so hard. <laughs> I mean, a, a pure state machine can't do it. Right. But, um, a state machine plus a counter could, right. You, you increment every time you get a left per end and you decrement when you get a right per end. And if you ever go below zero, you know, you had too many right per ends. And if you're not zero at the end, you know, you didn't do it right. Um, and maybe that would be, maybe that would be good. I mean, um, the, okay. Or state machine plus parenthesis counter. Okay. So if, if the calculator side enforced, enforced only good expressions can come in. That would definitely simplify the expression side a little bit because we are checking, um, we're checking this stuff, the unbalanced parentheses stuff, making sure we don't pop. Um, binary probably has to do that. This is checking for is empty. Like if we knew all that stuff was a non-issue for evaluation, that would be nice there. Okay, and then uh, so, you know, I think we can, we can look at that. I, that's, that's refinement to me. I mean, I think it'll simplify, it'll simplify the expression parsing or expression evaluation at the expense of complicating the calculator, um, calculator class that checks, does the checking. I don't know. I mean, that's kind of how compilers do it, right? They, they run their syntax checking before they start evaluating things. So there's, there's a definitely argument for it. Um, the other thing is I don't, I don't remember our test being quite so slow. And I'm wondering if there's some weird test in there that we've, um, made take extra long for some reason. I don't know what would, cause everything's pretty linear looking, but, uh, I'm going to take out all but one of these. Okay, and let's just see if we're well under five seconds now. Yeah, okay. We get to play binary. All right, so let's say about here. Um, yeah, that's a nice, nice idea too. Thank you. Welcome to, I don't, 
Um, don't remember when you joined. <laughs> I joined in, but I guess you were here before. It would tell me. Um, yeah, let's make sure we don't forget that. How about uh, disable illegal or um, calculator buttons that can't be used? Um, E.g. Um, no right parent if there's not been a left parent. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks. Nice idea. Uh, let's see. So back in these tests, well, we know it's... Yeah, one of these is relatively slower. It's still a second and a half for one of the ones up above. Okay, so let's do some chopping. Hmm. Okay. Point five seven eight seconds for that. Left parent thirteen equals. Let's let's run it. Left friend one three. Right friend equals. <laughs> okay. That doesn't seem so slow. Let's just run this test. Yeah, I mean, I mean some some systems will like insert a grayed out right parenthesis for you and kind of implicitly um, take it if it needs it. <laughs> um, and then there used to, old lisps used to do this thing where you, you could um, you could have a right, uh, right bracket would say, just close every parenthesis that you need to, to get me to the end of the stupid thing. <laughs> um, did that run? I guess it did. Yeah, could it be unit calculations? Let's, but like those are so linear. I just have trouble believing that's that's the issue. Okay, well, point five one five seconds. That really just seems. I know half a second is not all that long and and maybe I'm paying the overhead is, you know, 0.5 to start up and, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. We got more units. Yeah. Let's take this one. Oh, well, I should just run it with no tests and see what the, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's let's uh, capture that too. Um, ways to show uh, parentheses, parens need work. Um, let's see. So we got hint counter um, grayed out right parens. Um, a long press to close all. We could just automatically insert. Insert, although that's a little prone to something. <laughs> all right, five seven five. Okay, I I, I do kind of want to move on 
but I'm just noticing that that really seems slow. All right, um, no tests at all. Well, okay, I got to do one, huh? Um, one equals expect one. Yeah. Okay, I'm paying 0 0.403 for the first test. I mean, for for uh, this is the most minimal test we can do. Um, all right, let's just see this first unit test of that test of units, I should say. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I don't know, something in here is slowing it down. Yeah, it didn't feel unreasonable. I don't know. Okay. And also, this is doing that view inspector thing, which we know is going to be slower, just like the um, UI tests are slow. It has to build up a view and all that stuff. So there's a lot of overhead. All right, I'm going to let it go. I guess that tells you why I might prefer to test at a lower level sometimes, because it is, it is going to be faster. All right. Um, let's see. So I'm going to catch a note there, just that we um, did a little exploration of um, why UI tests are slow inconclusive all right i just want to move on okay um the next thing i want to do is this result type and then after that i want to do rounding not founding okay um right now we're showing values as yard feet and inches so like here uh three feet two inches is really one yard two inches and um for many purposes, that might be good. I mean, if you're, I don't know, a carpenter, you probably want to work in yards and feet. If you're a kilt maker, you probably just want to work in inches. And so I'd like to have a key or a control that lets you select whether to round, I'm um, sorry, to, to do yard feet inches or inches at least I, I could see wanting more but um feet plus inches is reasonable for some things i guess um all right so we haven't done a new button in a while um let's see where are we going to put it even and i don't know i don't know if my grid if i can make a, a cell that takes two and my other idea is is just label it yfi and or inch um somehow i, I gotta fit more text on there for this to work <laughs> um and is there is there a drop down in swift a drop down button. I guess drop down list. It would seem like that should be. Oh, maybe picker. I've used that before. They they let you control them a lot. Yeah, um, that might be okay. It's a little spacious.
player conforms to identifiable. Okay, um... This capitalized. Yeah, I don't want that. Okay. Um. I know there are other styles. Yeah, you can put segmented. Hmm, that might be all right. Or menu. What's that one look like? Presents the options as a menu. That that might be nice. All right. Um. Okay. So I'm. I'm gonna try putting just a control a scroll view with options above the text. Yeah. I mean, I think there's at most three options. Yeah, it could be a carousel. I don't know that you need to see them all, all the time because I'm also going to have these options for rounding to, well, realistically for kilt makers, it's probably eighth inch and 16th inch. And I, I don't know. They don't, they don't really work in 30 seconds of an inch because you're getting pretty darn small there. They will do 16 inch plus and stuff like that. Um, don't think I've ever seen them do anything that would resolve to half inch or anything like that. I don't know. Um, well, let's get something out there. All right. So I think we'll, we'll work from the front to the back. Okay. So open content. That's not the one. Okay. So we got the display, then we got our columns. All right, so this is picker. Let's go back to examples. All right, so these are case iterable. Okay. <laughs> Switch by of a key. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would be if. Uh, <laughs> um, I think the thing is, it, it, it's going to need some explanation because if I just put inch up there, it's like, what does this mean? I've got two inch keys, you know, something like that. Um, and YFI is already a little bit of a weird abbreviation for yard feet inches. I think if you select it and you see the values, you'll understand immediately. But um, if it's just there, I don't know. I, I think I want it to say something like show as and do it. Um, I was kind of thinking of a key with just a little like drop down button or something. And I'm hoping that menu style on the picker does that. Maybe I should just do it and, and make the preview preview show it with a menu format. Okay. So I can even, I don't know if I need to worry about tags. I think they do need tags. 
they need identifiable they're identifiable so they need tags if you're not identifying them yeah okay um picker and then it had a selection okay so yeah you need this kind of thing it is state um I'm calling them show as. And let's just make it string for a moment here. Okay. Um, picker and then eh, that stuff. Well, let's just take the example, get it in there and then worry about it. Okay, selection is Selected show as. I don't know what this is. Uh, hamburger menu left to the text. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm thinking more like a little drop down menu kind of thing, just a little triangle. <laughs> On the hamburger menu, or yeah, I mean, there there could be. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't like the the full size picker looks massive it's great for a you know setting screen or something but i'm hoping this display thing does it now why is it so slow i got too used to working on a mac project and i didn't have to run through the simulator and it really made uh made things a little nicer okay where's that styling picker style Wait. Xcode just crashed. <laughs> okay. Well, some other day. Okay, so picker style dot menu. I could run it faster than that. Well, maybe not anymore, but. Okay. Chocolate is invalid. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, we'll fix it, but um, it's tolerable. Why I can't get to it though. I may have to make a small class for that. 
I mean, the Enum has, we did something for that. Um, basically, we created functions somewhere. It wasn't operator now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's it's tolerable. I'm just worried that, that saying inch, maybe I could put that in the name, just show as inch, show as yard feet inch or something. Um, it would be spelled out. Yeah. Okay, let's... So, something's weird, though, with selection. It's not happy. Um, this has got to be... Uh. <laughs> it's not input buffer. It's not entry, I don't think. Maybe I said show as somewhere. Yeah, this thing, Imperial Formatter, has as inches as yard feet inches. So we need an enum that captures that. Well, looky here, I guess this has, wants to be that. <laughs> okay. Um, formatter that knows that stuff. Okay, I think we can work with that. Um, case inches case yard yeah, yard feet inches now nobody's using those and nobody's a case okay so let's let's go back to content view um inches um, let's make make these identifiable all right so as I'll steal their example. Okay. All cases. And then just text on dot raw value. Remember all cases. I thought I thought that was a free thing. Subs in all cases. Why does he not have that? Oh. I don't think I'm allowed to do this this way. Yeah. <laughs> what do they do? Oh, considerable. Oh, that's, that's nice. <laughs> okay, now we got all cases. All right. 
May have better names. Yeah, tastes are real thanks. Um, I thought I could get identifiable without that. Oh, I have to do this. Okay. But I can't put that on any of can I? Hmm. I thought you were blocked. Maybe you can declare properties, but not. Okay. Explicit. Assign their raw values. Is that not what I'm doing? It just does not have associated tag. Hmm. But I thought Hmm. I thought if I was identifiable, I would implicitly be okay. I've been through this before where picker just doesn't like the initial value. Now they're doing dot chocolate and that didn't complain. As date private var. I didn't put the type on it, but who cares? Use it to initialize a text view as a label. Okay, don't care about that. Post label. Hmm. Was it tag modifier? Where is that? I guess they've added that in. All right. I, I still don't understand the error. Does the pick change the selected show as? Yes, it, it does and it should. Hey, there, that worked. Okay, so maybe there is something into the formatting of that. Okay, that's that's not bad. Um, I think, like, we can get to the functions for those things as well. Okay. Um, all right. So, well, make sure nothing's broken from this process, but I don't think it should be. Oh, dear. We have it.
Okay, I think we're back to... Um, this is a few inspector problem, I think. Yeah, we don't have time to go deep into it. <laughs> um, does the pick change the selected show as... Oh, we, I did not try that, did I? Okay, sorry. Um, notice we're not getting these purple messages when we're running it real. Okay, so I think I think that's a good sign. Um, we're able to select between them. I don't know if the name is... I don't know what I want for that name. Okay. I don't know. View inspector, if assuming that's the problem, I'm getting a bit frustrated, but why is it? I don't know why it's got this problem. I mean, we're not particularly testing that in our tests right now. Let me do a theory. Let's, let's ignore this momentarily. Yeah, those purple errors are being triggered by these tests. Uh, okay. Nail them. All right, I'm going to take it. Um, and a picker to UI to select show as. Okay. And we'll pick up with that tomorrow. But I think, well, what we did was um, add a picker for show as either inches or yards, feet, inches. Okay, that's that's a good start. Um, this is UI only. Okay, well, thanks for joining today. So we got through the parentheses of uh, error checking. We reworked that um, um, the the way we calculated the operands and all that stuff. So. Um, that simplified the operator stuff. Oh, this is operand operators. So they don't have to select it. They don't have to check for the, the pending and all that stuff done. We unsuccessfully looked at why Utah UI test seems slow. And, um, we added the picker for show as, um, inches or yard feet inches. So, uh, I, I think the look is adequate. There's room there for, uh, uh, the fractions when we get to the rounding um we'll probably put them on this side but uh that that is probably okay um so this is uh this is a nice little bit of progress i think getting the rounding in and that in will will be helpful from the perspective of someone actually using it memory clear and all that stuff yeah you know you can get by without that percent and slash i don't think we really need for the most part probably plus or minus we didn't need and we haven't dealt with fractions um we'll get to that but um i think i think we're getting to a, a point where i can just about hand it to somebody and let them try it and learn learn the ui mistakes i've made all right well thanks for joining i'll be back tomorrow 2 to 4 30 eastern or 6 to 8 30 p.m utc and uh thanks for joining mighty coffee mug and mud shark 666 uh, thank you for your comments and suggestions it always helps and have a good evening bye bye